All right, so I'm just going to take these in order. And Steve was our first question. And Steve G, the Steve G was our first question. And he says, can the trade management be set up like a dashboard for current trades where certain decisions are based on specific trading rules? Uh, it's an easy question to answer, but unfortunately, the answer is no. What I assume that Steve G is asking about is when we're in the portfolio tools and uh, there's our ally financial position. There's no rollouts available. And let me just see, what was a recent one that we had here? Uh, they're all probably expired. So let me just go to radioactive trading. Maybe test Mary put has a couple in them. Let's see what I've got here. NVIDIA, Craft, Barry. Okay. So here's what I'm going to see. What Steve, I think, is asking. Um, okay. When you're tracking a position in power options, whether cover call, married put, covered combo that we just talked about or more, I could go to position actions and then position analysis. The position analysis tool will give me a breakdown of my current position, current liquidation value versus future expiration value, and then show me potential rollout opportunities based on background programming that we use. For the married puts, it's based solely on the rules and guidelines in the blueprint. For covered calls, it's based on what has worked for Ernie over the past you know, 30 years, 35 years, 40 years of trading options, and also based on some customer feedback. So I think what Steve is asking is, I see that I have an October 67.50 and a September 67.50, and but I don't see selling a call with a September 70 or the October 70. Could I program in to say, hey, I'd like to only see those positions in the rollouts where my new percent if assigned is at least 2%, my new max risk drops by at least 4%, and so that you could customize this to match what you wanted to see? And the answer is no. Right now, we do not have any features that do that. Okay. Or he says, for example, in a condor where one side depends on the other. No, we don't have that currently available in the search or in the rollouts where you can customize a program to show that. Now, we are hoping in the future to be able to show rollout opportunities that are based on your inputs. If you only did want to see covered call rolls where the return increased by 2% or it was only done for a net credit, never at a net debit, we're working on some things in the background. Where we may program that in. But for right now, there's no program to do that. And Steve also said, you've been thinking of creating a dashboard that ties data to your uh, TOS TDA feed for decision making. And right now, I don't think we have a direct link even through the API. You may be able to program that yourself, but we don't have a direct link to allow that to happen. Okay. All right. So that's essentially it there, Steve. I'm sorry about that, but we do not have the ability to do that uh, directly uh, through those positions. Um, to program it here in the rollout opportunities or a link from the search tool or from the option chain to give you a combination that if X matches Y or bear call matches X and bull put matches Y, link to think or swim immediately and place an iron condor for me on a particular stock. Um, so I'll take that under advisement though and we'll we'll talk about it there. All right. So um Steve, I'm going to get to you in just a second. That's Steve L. So that was Steve G. And uh, this is for Jesus, because Steve, I'm going to go to your question, and then I'm going to maybe pull up another presentation that I was working on earlier today so we can take a look at that very quickly. Jesus's question, can you backtest the following? Sell a covered call one, two, and three months, or maybe six months out. What would be the better outcome? You can, but it's manual. All right. So... I'd want to set up a basic, I could do it with the search by symbol and do it manually, or I could do it in the search, but I'd have to create a search first. So let's go back to January 1st. And I'm sorry, I went to search by symbol. I want to go back test. My apologies. So we're going to go into back test under covered call. And I'm going to go to search by symbol. There's a different way to do this that might be less manual, Jesus. I just thought of it, and we're going to show that too. But I'm going to go back as far as I can. We're going to go back to June in this case. And I'm going to select all expiration dates, and I'm going to keep it at less results for the time being. And while we're at it, I'm just going to keep Ally uh, going here. Not the best covered call choice I know. I could switch it. And so here... And we see that if I ran my search as far back as I could go on the trial account to June 
28, 2021. I can see covered calls out in time to July at the 50 strike, which already expired. August, which just expired. September 50 strike. Uh, my stock was at 50.22. So that's that's why I'm focusing on the 50. It's right at the money. And we also have out to December right now and out to January and even 2023 50 strike. So here, what I did is I just selected a back date and I selected to look at whatever expirations are available right now. And we looked one stock at a time. And now I can hit calculate group results. Now, is this showing me a continuous record of, hey, if I just sold it one month out, then rolled it one month out, then rolled it. So I had the June or July expire, then I sold the August and had that expire or assigned, and then I sold the September. No, it's just showing you the raw data that from June 28th to today, which would have given you the best return. The July 50 was assigned for a two and a half percent return. The 53 day out August one, which is about three times the amount of time was 4.9, almost double the 18 day out covered call from when we ran the search, but not triple. And 18 times three would put us at 51. Here it's 53 days out in time. The September 50, as of today, this would have been assigned at 4.9, but another seven, eight days after August expiration, the September 50 strike still at a 4.9% return. The December 50, still holding that time value, it's only at 4.3 out of a potential uh, max return, excuse me, of 8.9. So we're only about halfway there. January 2022, 50 strike, less than halfway there, expected a total of a 9.9% return. We've only had about 30 days of time decay, Jesus. So this one is still not looking good for us. It's only 4.2%. And of course, potential of 17% out to January 2023. Right now, that's only a 2.7%. So about a sixth. Yeah, roughly about a, a fifth or a sixth uh, of that value. So yeah, more like a sixth or a seventh, excuse me. So this just shows me that if I had done this, you know, what I don't know is that July 16th expiration, we ran it on June 28th, July 16th expiration, I was assigned 2.5 and the stock was at 50.09. Well, at that point, the August 20, 18 days later, so only 37 days to expiration, might have only been a return of 3%. But if I did the first one and got the 2.5 and the second one and got assigned for 3.5, I'd be up 5.5 or 6% almost, instead of 4.9 for the static 53 days out in time. That makes perfect sense, Jesus, doesn't it? Why? Because it's one of those standard rules of options investing. And what I mean by that is that the time value decay curve, let me get a better picture there. I'll do it over here. The time value decay curve, what it shows us is, of course, that the Premiums here decay much faster. This is maybe 15 days out. This is 30. This is 60. This is 90. This is 120 days out in time. This is 150 days out in time and so forth. So what it tells me is, number one, I get the most rapid time decay, assuming everything works out the way I want, Jesus, shorter term. More importantly, and you can see it right from this chart, Stock is at the same price on June 28th when we ran the search. July 50 strike, the option price is at 144, 22 cents in the money, so a dollar 22 of time premium. The August 50 at the money call, 53 days out of time, three times the amount of time, is not even double the price of the 18. It's definitely not three times the amount out in time. The September 50, 81 days out in time, almost seven times the amount out in time, is just over double the cost of the monthly. And so on December, 172 days out, 10 times the amount out in time, but it's only two and a half to three times the premium of the monthly. You look at any option chain, any expiration, I'm sorry, you look at any option chain for all expiration. You look at the at the money option for all expirations, Jesus. And you, what you'll always see is the same thing. You always get the highest annualized return selling week by week or month by month, as opposed to selling two months out, three months out, four months out in time. 
your question might be a little bit more direct saying that I want this particular stock. I'm interested in this particular stock and this particular stock I know has fluctuated a lot since January 1st. Now, if I was on my full account instead of the webinar account, which is essentially a trial, we could easily go back seven to eight years and, and see, okay, if the same thing I did in the search by symbol, Jesus, is what would happen if we looked at just those positions on a given stock, all expirations, and used less results. We can see the various different strike prices here at the money strike prices, 50, 55, and so forth for all the expirations. And then we could see how they performed. But again, what it doesn't do that would be manual to do is if I got assigned on July 50 and then looked on the 19th of July to see what the August 50 was at that time. And then on September, let's say I was assigned and I wanted to see what the October was. The backtesting tool doesn't do that. It doesn't give you a running total if you just sold one month by month by month by month. You could do that manually through the chain or through the search tool, historical backtest tool itself. But this does easily give you a comparison that you can see again the results of what you'd expect if we started on july 28th and sold the one month out two month out or two expirations away effectively three expirations away effectively six expirations and seven expirations away effectively and you can see the returns there where we were the highest are right now is with the shorter term ones we could continue to roll that month by month by month just a general rule of options that is always better to sell month by month or week by week to get the highest annualized return. It's also more beneficial in most cases, I feel, and Ernie feels this as well, to be selling one or two, maybe three weeks out in time or even one month out in time. And the reason why is if I'm selling two weeks out in time in a covered call position, Jesus, and something happens, either the stock spikes suddenly or it declines. I'm in this July series, let's say I started off, and the stock suddenly dropped down to $45 or $44 per share. I want to roll this call down for protection if I think I want to stay in the stock and I think it's going to recover. So I have the choice to roll out to August or September exists. And now that I've crossed July expiration, October might be there or December. If I had started with a three month out September or maybe started out with a six month out December, and something happened where the stock drastically fell to 42 and here we'd be below our cost basis right so we bought the stock at 5022 we have a net debit of 4590 and now the stock is trading below that price uh in that case i'm sorry the stock's trading at 42 i'm in the december the only thing i can roll to now is january 2022 it's not too bad it's a month out or january 2023 i don't have a february or a march selection yet to roll to Okay, so it's much easier to manage in the shorter term because you have more choices expiration wise to look at and evaluate rolling to if you start off with a weekly or a two week out position. Same thing with spread positions, um, although there are some 30 day spreads you might want to use if you're using at or out of the money bull call debits. Real quick, I'd also mentioned Jesus about a search function. And I like to do this. We did this on a recent webinar. I can't remember um, what it was called. I'm going to use a different stack. Let's just use Apple. Okay, and I want to do just the at the money Apple call, and we can only go back again to June twenty eighth in this example, Jesus. But we could go back as far as we wanted, seven eight years of data back on the full historical tool. But what I'm going to do first is create a search, and we're going to clear the filters. I'm going to leave it at all expirations, and I'm just going to leave it right at the money just out of the money i want to see the covered calls that were available for one strike out of the money for apple not even going to worry about return I'm not even going to worry about volume open interest implied volatility now i'm going to go to my lists i believe i have apple in here if i, I have tesla in here i have spx i could have sworn i had put apple in here but that's good let's add apple i just simply go to create and modify stock lists we're going to create a list. We're going to call it Apple One Strike OTM Backtest. And I just type in or paste my symbols. And that's it. Okay, so we've created our list. Now I just have to close the window. I've got all expirations, one to one lists, AAPL Backtest.
I should have just called the list Apple. Sorry about that, Jesus. So now here, what I have is all expirations at the 150 strike with Apple trading at 148.60. I'm not, yeah, the 149 is going to creep in there in some examples too, because it has dollar strike differences. Now I'm going to save it and we're going to call it what I just called the list. I'm going to call it Apple one strike OTM backtest. Why am I going through this process? Because now I can go to backtest and I can go into the smart history Excel rather than the search by symbol. So I'm controlling more of the covered calls I want to see. I just want to see the one strike out of the money, not all those other ones. Again, furthest back we can go is June 28th. And I'm going to do my Apple one strike out of the money back test. Okay. So again, the one, oh, of course. <laughs> Apple was at 134. So it starts me off with all the 135 strikes, which are now deep in the money. Whether I'm 207 days out, 445, five days out, 25 days out, 18 days out, and so forth. Let's go ahead and calculate the group results. And which ones are the highest? I've sorted by percent of fund changes. This one's a little bit different because that shorter term time frames only gave us the smallest premium. But what do we know? If I got 1.7% every 18 days, from June 28th till now, I'd probably be much higher than the 5.2% that we're seeing out of a maximum 19.3 for the 718 day out series. That just goes along with that same guideline, core principle of options trading. It's always better to sell short term and buy farther term so that you're paying a lower cost per day when you buy out further term. You're paying more up front, but you're paying a lower cost per day. And when you're selling shorter term, you're getting a higher annualized potential return. And that's what we look for. Okay, so I just wanted to show you the two ways to do that. You can create your own search, just one stock at a time, save that search, and then scan against it in the back test in the smart history. Or you could just use the search by symbol in the back testing fields as we did the first time and just look at those positions one stock at a time for all expirations. Use the less results to keep the strike number down so you can compare them. Okay, all right. Okay, Jesus, you're welcome. And if you have any other thoughts on that question that I didn't get to or something you didn't feel that I, I didn't explain directly related to the question that you wanted answered, just again, let me know.